Hey, Maddie, I'm so happy to be here asking you 11 questions today. I'm thrilled to be here with you. Are you still a practicing physician? Yes, I am. How do you balance these two seemingly unrelated professions? So I think they, um, they are related. In my mind, uh, medicine and writing go hand in hand because, you know, even before I was a writer, when I was a really young child, I loved hearing stories, right? I think that readers and writers, we love a good story. Um, and I've always been that way. And what drew me to medicine was the fact that every day, multiple times a day, I get to listen to patients tell their story. Um, and I'm in a field of practice where I have um, time to do that, where I can sit with patients and listen to them tell me about their lives. And I've heard the most amazing stories, like things that you just can't make up. I think it's just like the best um, profession for a writer to me, uh, because you're never going to hear the types of stories that you hear in medicine. And people, you know, tend to tell their doctors things that they wouldn't necessarily tell, you know, just someone that they met or a friend. So I think sometimes you hear things about people's lives that you wouldn't otherwise be privy to. Time-wise, it's definitely hard to manage. And I just kind of have to fit the writing in wherever I can. But I get a lot of inspiration from what I do, you know, for my day job. What's your proudest moment been? career-wise? I guess my proudest moment as a doctor, my proudest moments of a doctor have always, as, as a doctor, I've always been um, related to making a tough diagnosis. Um, and I've had the privilege to work with patients for a really long time. So that's um, happened for me, you know, uh, uh, several occasions where there's been a patient who's come in with um, some mysterious ailment and it's been my job to figure out what it is. And when I get that right, I mean, every time it's just the most rewarding thing. As you're saying this, I'm actually picturing Grey's Anatomy. I know your book is also <laughs> being marketed kind of yes. like that. <laughs> to me, there's like no better rush or high or feeling than to be able to give the person the answer that they've been looking for. Um, and a lot of times in my particular field of practice, you know, the patient has seen several other people and sort of they've come to me as a specialist to figure out what's going on with them and to give them that answer. Um, and when I'm able to do that, and I'm not able to do it every time, you know, it's tough. Um, but the times that I am able to, it just is the best feeling ever. Other than writing and your medical field, are there any other hidden talents that we don't know about. I can tune out my kids having a temper tantrum for <laughs> pretty, like for like a good five to seven minutes. Yeah, I feel like that's like, and that's a skill. It's more than a talent. I think it's a skill <laughs> I've built up over time. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I can't think of anything else that I'm like particularly good at. I would say it's a talent. Not everybody can do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've had to like hone it over many years of parenting. <laughs> Your website says you love bookshops, which I also do, and you mm -hmm. love tea with milk, and you love snarky conversations. Yes. If you were to be allowed only one of these, which one would you pick? I'm going to have to go with, with tea with milk, um, which I have right here, because it like sustains me all day. <laughs> I don't think I could get through a day without the tea with milk. <laughs> What's your biggest learning been from this year? Ooh, that's a that's a really good question. Um, my biggest takeaway from this year was how much I needed to meditate. I started meditating this year, like in the middle of the summer, and um, I wish I had started doing it sooner. It was always like something that I thought about doing, and I was like, oh, I don't really have time for that. Um, but it has been tremendously helpful for me. So it's it's been such a stressful year for you know for everybody, but you know for me personally, like doctoring during a pandemic and then parenting two kids through a pandemic. My kids have been at home um, this entire school year. So starting in September, um, they went out of school and all virtual in March and then, um, you know, have never gone back to school. They've been virtual since then. Um, and that's just been, you know, stressful for sure at times. And I just needed to find ways of kind of managing my stress. And um, yeah, I started meditating. It's been like hugely helpful. Um, I feel like I have a lot more insight into sort of what makes me stressed and what makes me triggered. And I, I like to think that I'm doing better at that now. And I'm sort of managing my stress better. You are an author. I'm a reader. We have to talk about books. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so do you read a lot? I do read a lot, but you know, what's funny and I'm, I'm probably going to get flack for saying this. I, I wasn't always a big reader. I think I was a reader when I was really young, um, probably like until like third grade. 
And then I kind of just fell out of it, like around like fourth or fifth grade. I don't really remember reading a whole lot. And then like all through like teenagerhood and like my 20s, I didn't really read a lot of books because mostly because I was studying and I was sort of like medical school took up a lot of that, you know, like just training uh, and and school. Um, so when that when there was free time, I was always reading something school related. So I fell back into reading for pleasure relatively recently, um, probably only like five years ago, if that, um, I started picking up books, you know, for myself again, instead of just for work or, you know, things that I had to read. Um, and that's been, it's been great. It's been like discovering how much I love it all over again. Um, and I have like a little bit of a problem with like an office full of books now, because now I just like sort of feel like I'm trying to catch up with all those years that I didn't really read a lot. Um, so now I read like a ton I go through like seven or eight books a month, which is a lot for me because, you know, going from zero to that many. Are you a physical book person, ebook person or an audiobook person? Um, honestly, it's all three. It depends what day of the week it is. So if I'm commuting to work, it's an audiobook. And um, if I'm chasing the kids around, it's like the ebook on my phone. <laughs> I mean, my favorite, my first choice is, is of course, the physical book, who doesn't love to hold the physical book in their hand. But yeah, it's not always practical. If you were to go to a desert island, what three books would you take with you? Oh, such a good question. Okay. Um, I'm going to say number one would be um, Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. And two, um, Commonwealth by Anne Patchett. Um, I only recently discovered Ann Patchett and I love everything she's ever written. She's amazing. And um, uh, let's see, my last one. Um, probably something by David Sedaris because it always, he always makes me laugh. I've never picked up a book of his that I didn't fall in love with. So if you could go back like 10 years, uh, is there something you would do differently? I, I guess that's a really good question. Maybe two things. I mean, one, I would have, this is like more like a more personal thing, but one, I would have probably had my kids earlier. Um, I wouldn't have waited so long to have kids. Um, and two, because they're delightful and I just want to spend all the time that I can with them. So um, yeah, if I could go back, I'd probably just have them earlier. And two, um, you know, I would have loved to travel and work internationally um, and volunteer as a physician internationally before I had kids. Um, it's something that I always like plan to do. And I know that I can still plan to do it once they're older and um, more independent. Um, but I do feel like there was probably a window in there where I could have done that and it just didn't happen. Um, and I wish that I'd, I'd worked harder to make that happen. So now coming to my last question, uh, why did you write this book? That's a great question. <laughs> um, I ask myself that all the time. Why did I write this book? Um, so when I, many years ago, um, did my own internship year, which for people who don't know, um, the internship year is the year after medical school. So you have your degree, um, but you have very little to no real life experience. And the residency, the four years after medical school is when you learn to be a doctor and you train. And the first year of that is called the internship. And it's really difficult. It's um, a lot of responsibility that you never had before, um, really putting, you know, what you, the book learning that you've acquired over the past four years, you know, putting that into action. And um, a lot of growth happens that year professionally. And personally, what I found out was that it's just, a, it was a really difficult transition for me and for everybody else I was working with. Um, and it just, you know, has a reputation for being tough for a reason. Um, it's not an easy transition to make. So, you know, I got to the end of that year and all of these really sort of interesting, sometimes traumatic things had happened. Um, and I actually wrote them, wrote them down in a notebook. I sort of like kept notes because I thought, I just didn't want to forget what that was like and the things that I and like the people that I worked with went through. And I thought, you know, in the back of my mind, I thought, you know, someday I'll write this down um, and I'll do something with all of these, you know, cases that I saw. And, you know, years went by and I came up with the idea for this character and I thought, you know, this is like an interesting way to tell the story of what happened that year, all of these interesting medical cases in this larger story about this young woman coming of age. So yeah, I just started kind of writing it when it's probably like another eight years after I'd done my internship, I was done with my residency and I was in practice. Um, I had a baby on the way 
And I was like, you know, let me just start messing around with this and seeing what happens. And eight years later, um, I finally finished the first draft of this book. I just kind of like chipped away at it over time. And I was yeah, doing it for me just to see what I could come up with. And yeah, and then one thing kind of led to another and, and here we are. <laughs> thank you so much, Maddie, for playing this 11 questions game with me. It was fun to have oh, you here you. and you are a great sport. Oh, I um, appreciate it. Thank you so much. <laughs>